Wildway FW11. Too big of a box. Thought it was going to be bigger, honestly. And they pack it good. Real good. Well, this is what you get. They packed it super good. It looks like it's not going to break the way they packed it. Looks really good. Look, QC pass. That's a good sign. This is UL rated, so we shouldn't have to hopefully worry about it exploding. Let's see what goodies we got in this box. Toolkit. Ooh. Hardware for the seat. This looks like the, uh, yeah, that's the charger. So, nothing crazy. So here she is, the Wildways FW11. Not to be confused with the S, which is the S is for the step-through frame. There she is with her monster, monster beast battery. It's got four piston and hydraulic brakes. It even has rear foot pegs. For a passenger, which I will not be carrying on this bike. She is. LED lights. Look at those calipers. Actually really good. They actually stop really well. But the main thing is this beast of a battery. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. So this is the handlebar setup. It's got a nice, nice color screen. I've seen on other videos where they said, oh, they couldn't see it in the daytime. They must have adjusted the brightness or something because if you're seeing this in person, you could see it no problem, even with heavy sunlight like I, on my last ride. Typical Shimano lever. It's got a throttle, a push throttle, but it's on the right side. I've seen some were on the left side. I don't know why they decided to make it that way, but either way it's good. Now, what I do like is the left lever is the front brake. Right lever is the rear brake, just like most of our uh, stuff here in America. I know in Europe and other places, sometimes they have, they're switched, or in China I know that's what they do. But here, that's what we do. Now, the shocks are actually surprisingly good. I was very surprised. You can lock it out, no problem. Right now I gotta, you know, just usually you can lock it out. And she looks pretty good. I have no issues with the shock. There's the shock on the seat too. And it actually does a good job, but of course there would be nothing better than rear, rear uh, hydraulics right there. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. This has a 32 amp power battery. And it's supposed to be UL rated, so you shouldn't have to worry about it blowing up in your house. Like some of the others. They're still giving to give you warnings. You still shouldn't be stupid with it, but that's really it. Now, if you wanted to uh, turn this off, okay. Right now, you see the key, it's an on. So turn it off, that will make it so you can't do anything. You can still turn off the key if you're just, let's say, sitting there, you wanna park it outside or something, you could just leave it off. If you wanna take it out, push it in and turn it. Now this has a little hook. Now you can literally just take it out. And I take it out and I charge it inside. 
you're supposed to charge them inside. It even tells you in the manual that you're supposed to charge it inside because it's not supposed to, you're not supposed to give it extreme weather. Let's say you get in the garage and it's freezing cold or burning hot. They don't want you, they want you within 10 uh, degrees of room temperature. That's what they tell me at least. That's everything I read in the manual. And I like to read manuals because I want to make sure I don't burn anything down. So it's kind of a good thing. Now for the pedals, push them in. All the way in and you push down. That's it. Now to get them out, you just literally pull them. They kind of need a little breaking in. They're a little tight when you first get them, but they're starting to loosen up just enough where they're still solid, but they're easier to hinge and unhinge, basically. Now, one of the greatest features, which is part of the big part of the reason I bought this bike, besides the huge battery, is it can fold pretty easily. So here's like this little safety. And then you roll this down, and then it comes down. And then you, for my for my car, I have a sedan. I have to take unhook this quick release and pull out the handlebars to fit it. But it fits no problem once I get it in. And you just push it. And the reason it's pretty strong is it has that metal bar in there. If you want to look, it has that metal bar in there, so it kind of keeps it in place, and it just works out good. It keeps it tight. I was surprised. I thought it was gonna like break or something or have an issue, but it's solid. Now how it folds in half, same thing, kind of the same kind of thing. There's a safety up here, okay, and then you just pull it, and then it can just fold right in half, which we don't really even want to do right now. But great feature, simple, and it works every time. So I can't complain, and it's solid. You don't feel anything. There's no wiggle. There's nothing. So they did a great job with that. The horn. Pretty cool. Now to operate the screen, you use this little thing right here. When you hit I, it will switch between trip, odometer, um, max mileage you went, and then average mileage you go. So now if you hit plus, it will let the pedal assist. It will go up to five. Okay, obviously minus is down. See the little boot? That's the instant walk feature. If you're walking it and you don't want to push it, you can just hold that down. Well, you got to put it in first for the pedal assist. Hold it, then it starts to go on its own. So it actually came in useful at the beach, surprisingly. And that's the, really the only place it, it came in handy. Otherwise, like, if you need to walk this thing, it's not like you can't push it. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty good. Otherwise, here, to turn it on and off, you just hold down the power button. Turn on the headlights and the taillights. You literally just press this. And it dims, and there's a little icon, like on your car, at the top. You can see that. Turn it off, you just hit it again, and that's it. It's really simple to operate. It's not like it's difficult or anything. If you've ridden a bike and you can play with some buttons, you're good to go. Now, this rack came with a seat on it. I'm never gonna carry anybody on this bike. This is not designed for that. This is designed for me to go take rides and chill. So, I took it off. It's just a basic uh, rail right there. And then, like I said, you can put your cargo bag. You can put whatever you want. It even came with a backrest. If you have like a boy or a girl, like a child, less than 110 pounds, you could fit them on this if you needed to. But uh, at that point, I'd probably just want them to get their own bike. Like, I wouldn't even want to mess with that. Let them learn how to ride it. But if you had to, you can do it. Some people have different needs, but for me, no. I don't need to worry about any of that. Now, this is one of the cons, which I can't say everyone is going to be like this. The front rotor came super bent. I tried to adjust it, and I got somewhere close, but every time... I ride it and bring it back. It seems like it bends a little more. I don't know if that's just me or if that's the case with it, but um, I'm gonna take it off one of these days, probably soon, and then like really true it and then put it back on and see what happens. Um, but besides that, you stop no problem, but sometimes you just get that ch -ch -ch -ch, like the little helicoptering is kind of annoying, but it, uh, it doesn't affect it. It stops no problem. Um, even the brake fluid, I'm sure it's not like amazing, but it seems like it's mineral oil. I believe that's what they put on there. They didn't, there's nothing to tell me, but 
thing stops no problem very smooth and you can adjust it there's no play in it like some of the other people said even the way they wrapped all this very nice they actually did a great job with this bike now if i put it in pedal assist one and i'm pedaling once i hit about just under 16 miles an hour so 15.8 15.9 once i hit that I can pedal and it won't assist anymore, but it doesn't restrict me to go only like 16 miles an hour. If I throttle, it will. But let's say I'm pedaling and I hit 16 and I keep pedaling, I'll get to 17, 18. Obviously it's not gonna be as easy, with, you know, but once you keep pedaling, it won't restrict you on the speed you can go, but it'll restrict you on the motor. That's what will happen. Same thing with throttle. If you're hitting throttle, you're in pedal assist, let's say one, and you're hitting throttle. Once you hit throttle, and you're going it will uh it will stop at just about 16 and then you can it just won't go anymore period so you know you want to go up higher higher that's fine you can even adjust these i haven't messed with the settings yet but you could actually adjust what the pedal assist number is the percentage i haven't messed with the settings yet but i'm going to adjust the pedal settings in the future i emailed the company to see if they'll give me any uh like a manual um unfortunately they gave me one but it was in chinese so i couldn't read it so i'm gonna email them back and just you know ask them to give it to me uh it doesn't mean they're bad it just means that you know people make mistakes people are human um but besides that it did come with a little scratch i don't know how that happened um but otherwise the bike was fresh when i got it there was really nothing wrong with it that, that's the only scratch and how pack, well it packed it was i'm very surprised i even had a scratch so I can't even complain. And I don't really care about scratches. That's just birthmarks to me anyway. Some people ask, is the throttle responsive? It goes. That's in first. It moves, so definitely responsive. Now, for the motor. We have a, let's see if we can see it here. 48 volt 750 watt motor single motor there's nothing on the front of course what this motor will do it, it actually is pretty powerful i was very surprised it's not like my scooter the only thing downfall it has is if you're going up steep hills it won't get you there as easily you're gonna have to pedal if you're up super steep because i went up a super steep hill recently and you were able to go and it's not like but you just couldn't get past a certain speed it's not a bad thing you, you know you should be pedaling sometimes that's kind of the point of a bike if you want to just cruise around and get a suron you know but the problem is you can't ride the suron on the trails so this is uh this is uh, a great motor it's not perfect it's not amazing but you know what it gave me plenty of joy it gave me plenty of fun and i get to ride it legally without getting in trouble even my scooter gets me in trouble unfortunately these days so uh it's worth it in my opinion for the money you can't beat this thing now the top speed i've been able to get to 28.8 miles per hour is top i'm gonna adjust the settings once i get into the settings i know how to get into the settings i just don't have the guide so i did see a bunch of stuff online but i'm just gonna wait for them to give me uh the proper guide and then i'm gonna go through it and i'm gonna adjust it because apparently you can make the speed a little higher they advertise 30 miles an hour. I know that's going to vary on your weight, vary on many circumstances. Obviously, I have a little bit of a load on the bike. It's not that much, but it's something. So all that's going to be variables, but um, hits 28. Now, when it comes to the pedal assist, you need to have one full revolution before it kicks in. So obviously, that's a safety feature. If, even if it's in five, like the highest setting, if you pedal halfway it's not going to kick in you need like about a full rotation before it kicks in if it just did it when you got on <laughs> it would jolt you pretty good so uh, it's actually better that they included that feature only thing is sometimes when you're crossing the street you don't expect it you expect it to go and you feel like you feel like you're pedaling three times before it goes but that's not actually the case that's when you use the throttle and that's when the throttle comes in handy so that's all that is um, I did contact Wildway, and they said that uh, this is IP64 rated. So if you get some water on it, fine. You probably shouldn't wash it. 
yeah, you probably shouldn't like straight up wash it. Like maybe like a cleaner on like a microfiber cloth to clean it. That's actually how I cleaned it. Uh, that's what I would recommend. What they said is if it gets a little wet, no big deal. But like you don't want to like spray it down and soak it to death. You know, like you just want it to be like drizzles here and there, a little rain, fine. But if you're going to be like, you know, dousing it in water, obviously not submerged. You're not going to drive it in the pool, of course. But uh, if that's the case, you just want to keep it as dry as possible. Now, if I can change something on this bike, the first thing I would do is I would give it a thousand watt motor. It peaks at a thousand watts, but I would actually give it a thousand watt motor and peak it as high as it can peak, apparently. Um, maybe like peak at like 1250, 1350. Um, but that's what the first thing I would do. Second thing I would do is even though the battery is super monstrous, I would actually like to see a 52 volt version. Just because you get the little extra responsiveness, is it really that much of a difference? It probably not in all honesty, but if you get a 52 watt version, even if, if, if we advance that much to get a, see a 40 watt hour battery, that would be insane. But this thing is already a brick. It weighs, uh, I think 21 pounds. So that's the case it's already pretty uh it's already pretty hefty it's not like it's crazy heavy but it's heavy enough where you're like oh shit i gotta carry around the brick man um but otherwise yeah it's it's been doing its job so i can't complain kickstand is nice it's fairly simple just for some reason the first few times i rode this thing i forgot to put the kickstand down you hear this huge scrape coming along and you're like oh man and then you realize oh I forgot to put the kickstand down, so be careful of that. Maybe that's just me. Last ride, I had this thing about, I rode about 28 miles. Only one bar came down, only one bar. Like, that's pretty damn good. That's why you get a big battery. I got it for range, comfort. It's a little bit short, but it's really not bad. Like, it's not like you can't sit on it. It's not like you can't be comfortable on it. Just adjust it to yourself and that's it, you know? That's all it is. Otherwise, I'm loving it so far. Over the river and through the woods. Now, this is my opinion, my final opinion on it. Well, things could change over time, but the Wildway FW11 is definitely worth the money. It's about $1,400 shipped. At the time, they even had free baskets. They gave me the baskets are worth about $160, so it was worth every penny. Um, I know a lot of people will use these for delivery driving. I don't see why that would be an issue. I think that's actually a pretty good idea, especially if you live in a city, if that's what you want to do. But, uh... Has it, has it served its purpose? Yeah, it definitely has, and it definitely is. Um, can it be a little better? Of course it can, everything can. But, it's doing what it does, and it's uh, not giving me any problems, it's just giving me more fun than anything, so I would highly recommend it. Um, if I was gonna rate it out of 10, I would probably say it's about an 8.5. Um, it's good, if you've never ridden an e-bike, or you're used to fast e-bikes, this may not be the bike for you. But otherwise, it moves, it's responsive, it goes, and I definitely recommend it. Peace out.